Oh hoy. I just want to say um, welcome to our channel. And so well, today we're going to be talking about this giant masking tape um, double collars that I have here. You see the sword right here? It's a Lego sword. And I use it to keep the giant double collars away because if you don't keep them away, they come after you. So pretty much here is my, my trusty dusty Lego sword. I just made this today. And so to keep the double collars away because, you know, you never quite tell where they're going to come up and spring up at you. So stay tuned for more. So, folks, here we are, and here we are, and the Diplocolysis came to attack me, as you can see. You always had to be on your guard because you're never quite sure when they're going to come get you. All of them are all over the place. And so what they are, actually, hammerhead salamanders. And what I'm going to be doing today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually going to be going and making one for you. But you've already seen it. If you've seen the um, live view that I did, what I'm actually doing is doing a wrap-up for you. It's pretty quick and pretty short and right to the point. This is going to be like only about nine minutes long, so it's not going to take too long for us to see this. But I want to just kind of show you some of the cool and beautiful work and how we did it and how I made it. And so without much further ado, just go ahead and look into it right now. This is some of the cool artwork that we're working on right now. I want to go ahead and just kind of give you like some... Um, of the uh, sorry, some of the speed sculpting of it. Let me go ahead and switch to the right one now. This is the speed sculpting of the Diplocolis and what's going to happen is I'm going to show you some of the cool work of how it worked and how it went through. So pretty much, if you saw the video before, what happened is that I was able to work on this. I was given a challenge. I was given a challenge with one of my friends. My friends told me that, you know, could I make uh, a Diplocolis that's pretty big, a, a big one? So what I did was this. I said to myself, okay, well, what can I, well, not Diplocolis, but a big sculpture. And I said to myself that what I would do is that I would make something that would be very, very big. And I went through a whole list of things that I could make. I thought maybe I'd make a gremlin or something or make one of those cool little creatures. And so what I did, what I ended up doing was that I said to myself, let me go ahead and map out a Diplocolis. So as you can see in the video right here, I have the Diplocolis and I'm working on it. And as you can see, the um, the work on it and the work to it is that um, it took me um, two days to do. And it's actually a very, very big sculpt. It's about 50, almost 50 inches long. I think it's about Maybe it's 51, 52 inches long. And what I did was that I worked on it just um, throughout the course of um, two days. And what happened was that it went to the street in front of my house, and I was just able there to just meet all the neighbors and stuff. And then what I did was that I just said, let me go ahead and just um, map it all out. A little animation that you see there, that's actually the animation of a difficult call, so I made, it, I made it in Blender. But as you can see, what's, what I'm doing there in the video is that I'm actually working on adding more details to it. Now, see, when you make something that's on, in 2D, is a 3D, you have to have some kind of a support system. Now, I didn't use anything but masking tape in the making of the duplicate, giant Diplocolis. And so what happens was, when you look at that, what you see is that I'm using the technique, I like to call the bridge technique. And what that is, it's kind of like a way that you can actually um, make the sculpture support more weight without having to use more tape. Um, I ended up using two rolls of tape to make this um, happen. And a, a roll of tape and masking tape is about it's about this big. It's about a roll of tape and how big it currently is. And so what happens is that, you know, you can actually, um, when you get it from things, this is a roll goes up from somewhere about, you know, uh, four to about $6 a roll. And this is the contractor grade masking tape, which is very good. And so as you can see in the in the animation, or in the, animation, or in the pictures, what's happening is that I'm actually making and adding more details to it. And what I like to see is, let me see if I can catch one of those Diplocolises around here somewhere. Yeah, let's see if I can catch one for you. And okay, here's one. Here's a Diplocolis right here, right? And so one of the Diplocolis is what it looks like is that you have it, like this little creature here. Well, I gave him some eyeballs and stuff like that. So like, you know, he's a little, ah. How I came to do this, by the way, I had mentioned before what it was when I was talking about my life, when I was waiting for the um, video I made when I was waiting for the kind of person, kind of person to come to the house and it ended up being a lady. Um, what happened when I say when I was making these creatures, what happens is that you have it where um, this was inspired by the monsters from the movie Pitch Black. Now, if you've seen the movie Pitch Black, the monsters are like this. You see these movies, monsters here. They're kind of, they call them um, uh, bioraptors. And the bioraptors, what they are, they're actually a pretty cool, um, significant, like, uh, threat to Vin Diesel in the movie. We land on the, um, the planet. I forget the name of the planet, but what it was, it was, uh, it was bathed with sunlight. And then the creatures came out at night when there was an eclipse. And the eclipse caused the, um, the creature to actually, um, um, come out and start eating them without any abatement. But what happened was uh, the sunlight, sunlight would actually burn them. So the whole hammerhead shape of the head, because one of the coolest creatures in nature is the hammerhead. If you don't ask me, don't ask me why I say that. Well, I'll tell you anyway. Why I say the hammerhead is one of the most um, significant creatures is because they have like a built-in sonar system in their head. That all that big open space there just makes them more in tune with the with the hair with the world. Like, can I say what our hair our hair is? 
that's pretty much something there that's kind of significant as well too. So pretty much, so back to this Diplocolis I have here. Diplocolis, when I saw this, I seen one of these creatures in, um, um, what do you call it, the movie um, Dinosaur, or maybe it wasn't Diplocolis, but it looked like one, and it was a pretty big one, it ate Aldor's egg, if you ever get a chance to see it in the movie. So this is one of those, that you have to kind of just kind of, you know, really cool. So I like the color pattern of this one. So what I did was, that instead of going with this color pattern when I made the big one, I actually went with um, the color pattern for this fellow right here. So this fellow right here is my favorite gremlin monster right so you remember that there was a show called my favorite monster and he was a blue dude um but anyway so this guy here he's actually like a gremlin and this is the color pattern i end up going with in order for you to see the, the details of how i was i made this so if you look in the picture what you see is that i'm working on the next step i actually went through the entire day of making the masking tape creature and what i did end up doing was that i am starting to put the skin on it so if you can see, it's already hold, it held the shape, held the shape of this, nothing but masking tape, as you can see. And then I have on the table several different masking tape um, sculptures so you can see how it is. So what I did was that I actually just kind of went through and started skinning, and skinning the creature in its entirety. And so what makes it really cool is that when you look at how it is, it's a very lightweight, very durable shape. And what, what do you see those, there was a little transition there. That's my in-between transitions that I have for um, when I do it. I was gonna break it up into little pieces and make it into like 10 videos. And I also thought, you know, if I just did it like this, I'd be able to kind of talk with it and you'd be able to hear what I'm saying and be able to understand um, pretty much how I did this, you know, because when you do something like this, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you're kind of just hoping that you'll have an opportunity just to be able to, um, you know, explain some of the stuff. That you're to. And so, you know, pretty much you have different diplocolices and different creatures that keep coming up. So like this one here is like, this is another one. This is like one, this one here glows in the dark. So he's actually a cool one. This is a Pretty significant one that glows in the dark. As you can see him in the picture there, but he glows in the dark. He's actually um, one of my favorite ones because this is the one I, I keep in my car. And he's like, you know, just they all have their little mouth and stuff like that. He's sort of like, uh, how I made his eyes, by the way. His eyes are UV resin. And that pretty much is. He's a pretty cool one. I'll keep him with me because, you know, it's kind of cool to have a nice little, you know, creature that you make that's, you know, supposedly extinct. But you know how it is with everything. You always say everything's extinct, but then you got like a Loch Ness monster and you got a cola can and all that stuff. What ends up happening is that um, you end up finding out that these creatures are not really extinct, but they're actually just unknown for now until we find one again. But for the most part, you see in the picture, you see I'm working on the Diplocolis. And I've gone through the, the Diplocolis. The name is pretty cool. But the, the bottom line, why I like it again, is because of the head shape and reminds me of pitch black, but pitch black creatures. The other thing, too, is that you have it where, um, as I'm putting the, 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 the sculpt on it, what I started doing, I was like, in the picture, you can see that as I'm working on it, I decided to just go ahead and just like, make the tail a certain pattern because all the other ones, their tails are kind of flat. When you look at this one here, this tail is flat. You know, he has a flat tail, and it's, um, it's kind of like that with the, with the paint. And um, I use um, acrylic paints for his body, but for the most part, though, these are all very lightweight, very lightweight, very durable masking tape um, sculptures. So the, now the picture's at, at, inside the house. So what I did was that I gave it the seal because, you know, when you give something a seal, it actually preserves it. And so all the ones that you see on the table that I showed you, including my, my favorite gremlin, they have a seal on them. And when they have the seal, the seal makes it, when, that's why it makes them a little more expensive. But the reason why they are the way they are is because that way I can keep and preserve them because masking tape is like skin, okay? It's like skin. You know what happens if you don't give your skin lotion over time? Well, the same thing happens to masking tape. It gets kind of flaky and dry. And see, masking tape is an organic material. It actually is organic. It's, it is paper. So you're kind of like working like a little bit of something like an origami type of thing. But what you end up doing is that you end up putting some, some, or some, some it's adhesive as well as some, a lot of love into these creatures. And it's just that even though this is not a Diplocolis, this is a gremlin. But this is a Greg's gremlin because it's not the gremlins from the gremlins movie. You, there, there's no one of these in the gremlins movie. And this is one of mine. It's my tiger gremlin that I made in my own IP. And so pretty much this is, you know, back to how it was with the, um, the Diplocolises. I like making these because they are, again, pretty cool to make and then people like you know they just love them right little cute little things sitting in your car and then you have a unique piece of something that only i make you know and so what makes it so cool is that when you really kind of look into how all the work that goes into it you realize that it is a lot of work i mean I had a 12 part animation the whole thing runs for about you know to do the actual from start to finish all the videos is going to be about like seven eight hours to make all these things and what i'm doing is that i'm actually speed through it so you can see just the whole um, making it and then tighten up the hands because the hands are like really cool. So, you know, I'm going to show you that one in a little bit, but for the most part though, I just want to show you how it is just going through the, um, the, the motions of it all. 
because when you have it, you have the thing where it's like, you know, you're kind of faced with um, a lot of um, um, a lot of creatures and stuff like that. So, um, or a lot of work because, you know, everything is a detail and the details is what makes the pudding so good because, you know, that's something that, you know, again, I just showed you the steps how I did it and pretty much it takes some time. And a lot of this, the struggle that you face with any of these designs is this pretty much having to make something from scratch, you know? I mean, there is a basic design. I have been making a lot of dipple calluses, but for the most part, one of the things we find is pretty interesting is that the dipple calluses have a, um, you know, they, um, they're very sturdy. And see, the thing is, I like, I like lizards. Okay? I'm, I'm a lizard person. I, have a collect, I had a collection of lizards growing up. I had um, um, flying geckos, and I had um, geckos and lizards and all that stuff. And what happens was, as I was going through it all, I, I found out it's actually a pretty cool thing to be able to, like, you know, not just have lizards and to, you know, have a lizard situation, but what it is that you can actually have these creatures that they don't die. Because everything that you have that's alive will one day, unfortunately, die. And that's kind of the sad part. That's the last, last time I learned when I was going my veterinary career was that a creature that you have as a pet will one day die. But for the most part, though, one of the things I think is really interesting is that you are you can have a situation where these... um. Um, these diplocalis creatures, you know, they kind of live on and kind of like they were once extinct, but now they're, you know, now they're alive again because I made them so with these things here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a treat. I'm going to actually show you one in a few seconds. And the one that I have actually glows in dark. So I'm going to show you the big one again and with um, the diplocalis, with the um, um, big boy to go along with it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that right quick. Hold on a second. Let me just go to show you the camera and I'm going to switch that real quick. So here we go. So here's me again and I'm here. And um, as, as promised, I'm going to show you the dipple collar. So here it is right here. So you can just kind of put it down right here. Just kind of just, just kind of make sure that it doesn't quite get you. And here it is. Big one. And it's like the big, 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 back, back, back. I got the big giant mouth right here, as you can see. It's just kind of very, very vicious, as you can see. So he's huge. He's huge. He's back. Back Simba. Back. You know, I don't have a name for him, actually. And probably Simba would be a good name, but it's like, kind of like a tiger. But for the most part, though, it's kind of one of those things where you're just trying to just trying to kind of hold it back because this creature is really kind of like a big 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 creature you know a big big situation there so yeah here you have it i'm gonna just kind of hold him this way because you know he just wants to bite and fight and stuff because he's like he's like he's out of water and he's a big guy so we put this knife down real quick i can hold out of the way we don't have the camera but here's him this is him right here yeah he's a big 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 fella big fella big diplocalus fella so this this guy here is super huge and super long so yes it was, i just gonna have to hold him because you know he's just, just so ferocious yes he is so ferocious and so here you have that right there so i'm gonna hold him hold him good so people are wondering okay so how is it how is it having a pet diplocalus well the same thing as any kind of pet you gotta feed it and make sure it gets fed and i'm gonna show you the comparison i'm gonna hold it under his neck real quick and here's a comparison with this one here's my favorite monster here's my favorite monster gremlin and he's in pretty cold, you know, so his, his patterns, and I see his patterns are very similar to the patterns of him. So actually, they're kind of like buddies and stuff like that. So here's that one. And then, so you have that there. And then you have, like, just to show you the size comparison of the one that's, like, you know, this one that's, that's made. You see how small he's actually can fit on top of his head. So you the size comparison of how big this creature truly, truly is. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and say, hey, thank you so much for watching. But I just want to do a quick, quick, super quick video. And not take up too much time of your time because I know how life is, how precious life is. But for the most part, I just want to say thank you so much. And thank you so much because it's like, you know, if you don't say thank you, and you ask people to subscribe, they won't. So it's, it so happens like you have this creature and this creature is just one of those big, big, big guys. And, you know, it's pretty cool. So if you ever want me to make something big like this for you, just let me know. Because what happens is that these kind of creatures are, you know, they're, um, they're pretty much, uh, you know, they're extinct. But. They're, they're cool and big old giant salamander. The biggest salamander that in the world, I think it's called a hellbender. And it's like, you know, I think it's in Southwest. I always thought it was like a giant Asian salamander, but this guy here, he's bigger than that. He's he's, a, he's the biggest one. So he'll, he'll be cool. So he'll be cool. So, so calm down, calm, calm down, simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your cooperation. And just let me to see, I'm going to grab that knife. I just can't grab that knife. It's just, oh, just drop the knife. Oh, dang. <laughs> just calm. Just want to just let's just um please like and subscribe thank you so much